Hi, and welcome back to the next video in Computer Science for Everyone. This time, let's talk about creating classes and give a few programming examples when we can. As you see, I'm still here with the previous class we created. So let's go and create a new class in our default package. And this is going to be, for example, a dog, as we've seen in the presentation. In this case, dog is only going to hold functionality about a dog, but it's not going to be a program and it's not going to start the program or run anything. So I'm going to tick the public static void main box off. So here we have our dog. So what properties does a dog have? Well, we've agreed that um, it has a color, an age, and potentially um, um, a food that it likes best. Let's not give them dog food. Okay, so it has a color, an age, and a food. And then it can do some things. So these are the properties that we've already defined. And then the actions are going to be methods. So we have a bark method. We have an eat method. And then we're going to have the private bark once method. And this method is going to print out to the screen the word woof and an exclamation mark. And then let's say we have, just as we described in the last bit of the presentation, a method to get the age of the dog. Let me explain what this means in a second. First of all, let's create the bark method. So bark is going to bark twice. So there we have it, our bark method now is going to print woof twice, because we've called this method twice. Eat method is going to say that I'm eating. And then remember how we can concatenate strings and numbers or strings and other strings. So here we're going to put the food that a dog likes. So I'm eating, and then we add to this string, or we concatenate with this string, this food variable, which is another string that we created as a property. Okay, so this is how we would concatenate the two strings together. Then let's talk about the getAge method. Remember how in the presentation we talked about how methods could give the caller back a value. In this case, if we call getAge method, just like here we're calling bark once, we would get back from that execution of the method the value of the age of the dog. Hopefully nothing too complicated here. Let's try to create a dog from our printing class that is now going to print details about a dog's and see what happens. Let's first delete everything that we had in here. Delete this hello method. And one thing that we haven't mentioned so far is how to create a dog object. We've talked about what the object is, but we haven't said how to create it. And this is something that we will see in the next presentation. For now, let's accept that in order to create a new dog, we simply do it this way. So Charlie is going to be a new dog. And this is a variable of type dog, which is the class that we have created up here. I know this is kind of complicated, but if you have a lot of doubts, you can try and re-watching this or even ask a question on the side panel of the course where I will answer any questions you may have. Okay, so we have a dog, Charlie. And now, Charlie can do some things. 
we remember that the full stop after a variable will give us the sort of things that we can do inside that variable. So Charlie can bar, I can eat. We can get the age of Charlie. We program that method. And there's also a bunch of other methods that are default to any object. So you can see bark, eat, and get age come from dog. The rest come from object, which is a default class in Java. So let's say that Charlie can bark. Let's uh, play and see what happens. So there we have it. Bark is going to bark twice. And here we have our two woofs. What happens if we do charlie.eat? We're going to get Charlie to eat, but we haven't said what is the food that Charlie likes. Let's see what happens. He's eating null. Not sure if that's a dog food, but I, I, I don't want Charlie to be eating null. So we have to define the food that Charlie likes to eat. We don't have anything in our dog class that will let us define what food he likes. As you can see, we're never assigning a value to food. In, not in a single line of our program, food equals something. So there is another method that we can create that doesn't have a data type. It is not void or int or double or string or anything. It is simply this without a void or the int public and then the class name and two brackets at the end of it. And this method is called the constructor. I'm not sure if you have seen the movie called The Matrix, but the constructor is the method that runs when the object is created. Just like in the matrix, the constructor was the program that they loaded before going into the matrix. So the constructor runs when an object is created. And here, we can say food equals dog food. For now, because why not? <laughs> so let's say that food equals dog food, and let's try to run this again. And now Charlie is eating dog food. We haven't told the program what food he likes, though. It is simply there. And all dogs we create are going to eat dog food. So you can see I have simply created a new dog called Bernie. And I've uh, asked him to eat. I'm going to see what happens. So indeed, Bernie is also eating dog food. So how can we tell this program that we're going to, when creating a new object, specify what food this object, or this dog in this case, is going to eat? This is the way we do it. In between the two brackets, we put a variable. It's going to be of type string, just like the food. And then food is going to equal input food. So let me explain this a bit more. The dog constructor now can take a variable of type string. And this variable is what going to go inside the food variable that is part of the object. So this is kind of how this goes. If we go back to our program, we will see red lines now. The constructor dog with two brackets is undefined. And indeed it is because our constructor now needs a variable. It needs us to give it a string, which is the food. So let's say that Charlie is going to eat dog food. And Bernie is going to eat bacon. So now this value of dog food, which we've put inside these brackets for dog, goes into the constructor method and gets assigned to input food. So now input food has the value of dog food. And then food gets the value from input food and gets assigned it. And now food has the value of the food that we gave to the constructor. 
So when we say I'm eating and we concatenate food, this is actually the value that we originally gave to the constructor. So let's see if this creates change in the output. Indeed, here we are. I'm eating dog food and I'm eating bacon. So Charlie's eating dog food and Bernie's eating bacon. The last thing that was in our dog class was how to get the age of the dog. So let's try to get the age and store it in a variable. This is really simple. Remember how you said that calling the method would give you back a value. So there we have it. Charlie age is the thing that we get when we go to Charlie and we execute the get age method. This gives us a value. So all of this is essentially swapped for Charlie's age and then it goes inside our Charlie age variable. We can then try to do this and see what happens. Well, we get the value zero. Why could that be? Well, just because, just like the food, we haven't assigned an age for the dog. So string input food is going to swap out the value of the food. And with a comma, we can change and add a new parameter to this method and say age is new age. And now once again, our constructors go red and we need to specify the age. Let's play and there we get the value three. So let's go over what this is again. Our value of dog food goes into the first value of the constructor and then this gives a value to food, which is what you use when we do the eat method. Say I'm eating and then we concatenate the food variable. This food variable gets this value from input food, which is what we specify in the constructor here. Similarly, the age is what changes the value for the dog's age. And this is what we get when we execute the get age method. We return age, which is defined up here, and it gets the value from the value we pass to the constructor here. Then when we do charlie.getAge, this is three, and then we print that out, as we learned in the previous lecture. Pressing play again gives us the value three. And similarly, we can copy this and rename it Bernie age. Say it's Bernie get age, and then swap that for Bernie age. And now we should get the value six. And indeed, there we go. So we have learned a lot of things in this video, and I appreciate that it might be a bit, a lot of information, but let's try to rewatch it if you have a lot of doubts. And if not, you can always ask the questions at the site. So we have created our class dog, and it has three properties, a color, an age, and a food that it likes. We have a bark once method that will print to the screen the word woof with an exclamation mark at the end. And our bark method will call this method twice. So that barking is at least done twice. We have an eat method, which prints the words I'm eating and then the food that our dog likes. And finally, we have a method that will return the age of the dog. The age and the food our dog likes are specified in parameters we give to the constructor. And the input food is what specifies the value for the food. The new age is what specifies the value for age. And we give, give these values when we create a new object. Remember, the constructor is the first method that is executed when we create a new object. So in here, dog food would swap for the value of input food. And three would swap for the value of new age. 
and then Charlie would be eating dog food and be three years old, and Bernie would be eating bacon and be six years old. Then we've executed bark and eat, and we've gotten two woofs and dog food. We've executed Bernie.eat, and we get that he's eating bacon. And then we've stored the value of the age of Charlie, we get from the method getAge, into a variable called CharlieAge, and we've printed that out, and we get the value 3 down here. And we've done the same thing with Bernie's age, and we get the value 6. So I understand this is a quite complicated program for a beginner, but I'm sure that if you focus on it enough, and you try to think like the computer is going to think, you'll be able to get this without a problem. If you do have any questions, remember you can go to the site panel of Udemy and ask questions, and I will reply as soon as I can. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.